Welcome to another edition of Interview with DJ Nocturna. Yeah. Please like and subscribe and be sure to make a comment if you like this video. Um, and thank you for listening to my podcast and also to the Queen of Wands on Modstap Radio. This show will air on Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. I'm talking to guitarist and founder of Beauty and Chaos, also the president of Schechter Guitar Research, Michael Servavolo, and New York City born singer and songwriter, Whitney Tai. And also she's the, she's, the new, she's the new vocalist for the latest single by Beauty and Chaos called Orion. Thank you guys. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Always to a pleasure. You. I'm glad. I'm glad Whitney can join us. And you know, the last time I talked to Michael, it was uh, uh, what was it? Two years ago, right? Something like that. Oh, was it last year? <laughs> I know it's gone by quick. I just the Facebook memory popped up and it was like, you released Finding Beauty and Chaos three years ago, and it's like I know. Yeah. I mean, this is this is going to be. Now, I, I know this is going to be um, your fifth album, right? I know this, you have a latest single called Orion. Yeah. It's going to be part of the forthcoming album. Yes. Hope to have it out in February is, is the gold uh, what we're shooting for. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Actually, it'd be like the third studio album with the other one. Oh, the being third studio. studio. Okay. But, now, yeah. I, I know you guys are, are colla you're collaborating for the first time, right? Um, how did you guys meet up? How did you guys um, get together? Actually, uh, uh, it, it was Cat Leon from Holy Wars that introduced us. Uh, I told, I know. you know, Cat did the final song on the, the Storm Before the Calm, which in my head, I put it there to sort of lead into what this next record was going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Thought that far ahead, oddly, but uh, I told Kat I was going to be doing a record I wanted to do with all female singers, and uh, Whitney was the first person that she brought up and introduced us, and we we talked music and we kind of shared CDs and we hit it off as friends and also same influences, and she seemed to be in the mindset of what Michael Rosan and I wanted to do with this record was kind of an odd mixture of like, I think I threw out the phrase Bjork meets Bauhaus tour, which is yeah. a pretty <laughs> wide spot. <laughs> and yet at some point I knew exactly what you meant. <laughs> and we did the track and sent it to her. And I think a couple of days later, she sent back, uh, you know, I hate to even call it a demo. It was like she had the song finished and it was, it, it was kind of that effortlessly uh, that it just came together. And so, Whitney, you you are the songwriter, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, what is it? What is it about the storyline? Uh, you know, it's funny. It's like, and and it's funny as the more I write songs, the more I I try to pull back from saying too much what songs are about because I love I love when listeners can kind of bring their own story to the forefront. But I would say uh, without being repetitive. Um, that Orion is literally a character that everyone knows. It's someone that we've all dealt with. And um, it's also like tools for how to, how to get through that sort of like toxic relationship. So um, it's kind of like that subconscious voice that's telling you like, yeah, you want to retaliate, but the real way to get through this shit that you're going through is, is to do something different. It's to choose um, a game game plan that's not going to like give you the same result over and over again and so Orion is kind of like a self-help manual for anyone trying to get out of a just an abusive relationship and and it looks like it fits really well with just the whole song the way that the, you know the way you compose it and everything thank yeah. you yeah uh, when Michael sent me the track it was you know everything was just so beautiful from the, just the composition the you know the guitar work the the percussion like everything was just really gelling like on like a a really really deep and ethereal level and it was just very easy to kind of like sink into that world that they had crafted and be able to to write something that would match the mood and, and the dialogue of the music so was this something that you had figured out already that you're going to do it this way you're going to write it you're going to write about it the way that you planned or was it something that just came gradually 
I think the music dictates the song. Um, I, I feel like because we're living every day and we're kind of growing and we're moving through experiences that like my songs generally, whether I subconsciously or consciously write them or not, it's, it's all stuff I'm dealing with inside. And whenever I feel the right track will attract like the right song, I try to deliver that sort of topic to that song. So like, because this song has a certain mood, um, it, it just naturally progressed into writing about this topic because it felt right. It just felt like the right uh, method of communication for this, for this song in particular. And, and Michael, this, this latest single is going to be the is going to be released from the forthcoming album called Behind the Veil, right? And this is uh, scheduled to be released sometime in February of next year. Yeah, that, that's the plan. Uh, you know, uh, looking at the speed that we're working and everything. I mean, all all of Beauty and Chaos songs uh, are in this manner. You know, we we do the music, and you know, to, mm -hmm. I kind of toil over some singers and go into my head here just hearing their voice going, this would be right for this person. And uh, it happened to be the first one we had written and it just seemed like it was on this uh, stylistically. And, you know, I could always, I, I heard where Whitney's voice would fit in that, but it's always the singer that we we bring in to collaborate with does their lyrics and every, everything. I mean, I've never sent someone, mm -hmm. here's what you're supposed to sing, here's the melody on a piano. And uh, I think it it makes it a true collaboration that way. And uh, I, I think yeah. it's it's great that you know I think that the music does guide the singer in a way, or it pulls something out. And you know I I love what Whitney said about you know not really saying what the song is about because to me the best songs are always ones that are open to interpretation by the listeners. And I think for the most part everything that's been you know the Beauty and Chaos songs do have that open-endedness like you can kind of go it's talking to me because this and you can fill it in and uh, I think that's what makes a, a great or a song that's long lasting or that has a a wider you know swath to a uh, to, to a listener to where it feels like you're talking to them. So I heard that this album is going to be pretty much all female singers? Yeah I, I it's it's something that beauty and chaos that I've I've tried to do from the beginning. I've tried mm -hmm. to paint ourselves in a little box. Like each album has had sort of their own like limitation that I've placed on ourselves uh, in what we do. And uh, I think limitations, you know, in our world of excess, uh, you know, and even recording when you can have, you know, track after track after track. You know, Pro Tools becomes like the ultimate enabler. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> you have the band with us do another track let's do another overdub but you know it I, I before this record you know even we even started it I like I mentioned earlier I had the conscious you know in my conscious that the next record would be all female singers which is why we you know I could have saved stranger to be the start of this record but I thought it was kind of nice to end that last record being the leap into this one and uh, mm -hmm. being that I'm actually writing, you know, to me, uh, writing a, another song for this record, maybe that is going to be the jump off point to what, what comes after this. Uh, so yeah, all female singers. I, I mean, I, I, I love the tracks that are on the first record with Tish, yeah. me and Betsy. They're some of my favorite ones. I, yeah. I maybe I tend to, you know, I love Cocteau Twins and Bjork and things like that and Garbage. And uh, it just seems like a, you know, when when you're doing multiple singers, even though it's the same people that are doing the music, uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 it it's always in the back of my mind to make it sound cohesive and not sound like a compilation of just a bunch of songs, you know, k -Tel's Greatest Hits or something like that. So <laughs> doing it yeah. with... Uh, female singers and the, you know, and Michael and I doing the music does give it this constant thread that I think will go throughout. So I think it's, it's going to help make it cohesive. And I have, have a list of quite a few, you know, female singers that I wanted, want to work with and in hope. Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, trying. Are, are they confirmed? Or do you have the names of the female singers that you have confirmed already for the album? 
Yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna wait. Not not that it's like some big reveal, but the song. That <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. And, That's what I'm, I'm uh, just trying to know. That's okay. Yeah, wait. I, I, I guess my point is that I, I, I wanted my my kind of uh, being impetuous and impatient. I want to get a record out in early February as opposed to late February. So uh, I, I kind of don't want to wait and do this as ten or twelve songs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which would push it back to late 2022. Uh, so. I, I think this will end up being, this will be six songs on this album and Beauty and Chaos songs tend to run in that six to seven minute range. So, I mean, it's still gonna be 50 plus minutes of music. Uh, so, and maybe there'll, be a, maybe there'll be a part two of this. I certainly wanna work with oh. all the ladies that I've spoken to and mm -hmm. maybe the next record won't be all female singers, but I certainly wanna work with everyone that I've spoken to. So maybe then, you know, because I, be a you know, no, because knowing you, you're probably gonna have a remix album after that, <laughs> right? And all that stuff too. No, so I, I don't want to get so, uh, you know, like following the way we did it. So, but actually, in okay. my head, no. But funny that you said that. I this record may be these six songs, and then possibly the a couple of variations. It may be encompassed in one. Uh, so this record actually may have some different remixes of these six songs included on it instead of another record. And I think doing it that way, I would probably stress to the, the remixes that are approached going, it's included with this. So let's make these really different, you know. Uh, so I, I may just send them the vocal track in the, the tempo or something and let them go completely off with it. But uh, that's what that's what rattles around in my head and keeps me up at night. Yeah, you know, I I, I always like the singers that you have, though, you know, like Evie Vine, um, Tish, your wife, and all the singers that you had, the female singers you had in, in the previous albums. Um, so Whitney, what is it like to work with uh, with Michael so far? She hates it's it. Uh <laughs> No, it's awesome. Michael is so much fun just on a personal level, on a work level. So we, we just get along really well. We have very complementary personalities and um, we're able to talk about a multitude of like topics together. And even when we were recording Orion, just mm -hmm. the dynamic of being in the studio with him and like, uh, you know, there was one portion of the recording where I came in to track vocals and there was like another section of the song that had no lyrics. And I was like, he's like, come on, give me some lyrics right here. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, you know, I'm scrambling. I got like 10 minutes to write this, this verse. And then I jumped in the booth, but like, it's just that fun sort of spontaneity and like just the encouragement. It's, I, I think it's been just an, a great experience. And even up to now to release and then filming a video together, we just had a blast. I'm, I can't really stress. I'm sure every other BIC member can, say the same thing that Michael is just a pleasure to work with. Yeah, you know what I like about Michael is his his concept of family. You know, yeah. I, it, besides having a wonderful family with a beautiful wife and beautiful kids, you know, he's got this incredible beauty and chaos family. And uh, I remember when I when he when I got that vinyl and he puts in the vinyl, he signs it, you're part of the family now. And I'm like thinking, okay, well now I got the brand. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't go what is some type of cult. <laughs> no, but I, I think there's, you know, I mean, what, what started out, I mean, I, I didn't know this was going to turn into this. I mean, it was sort of a, doing that first record was a sort of a knee-jerk reaction to a recording I was doing with the band I had been working with, kind of creative differences or wouldn't even say that wanting something different and wanting to do something different guitar wise and it, it started simply and i've said this before with michael rosine going turning around and going why don't you just why don't you just do your own record and you go yeah like and then you go you step back five minutes later like what did i just commit what? to <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't want it to be like you know a lot of times guitar players that do solo records you know it it becomes self-serving and just kind of you know look how fast i can play and i mean there are definitely exceptions to it i think johnny marr did a gorgeous record and mick ronson so there are some exceptions to that but i'm sure as shit not a joe satriani or steve Vai, and you know 
how many notes I can do. That's not the record I wanted to do. So it evolved into this thing that just became a, you know, was why I said it's more of a family that it just evolved into that. And it's, 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 it's fun. And that's at this point in my life and uh, everything, it, it has to be fun. You know, to me, the idea of sending a song to, to Whitney and she does her stuff and she's like, text me, Hey, I just sent you something back. And as this, kid like joy almost like christmas like unwrapping a present like having no idea what is going to come back or what this music that we sent to her is going to inspire or lead her down and you press open you press download you put the headphones on and listen so this is that's to me is the the, the real joy of doing this project uh you know i have no notions at at this point of being a a rock star or you know anything but like you that. are a rock star <laughs> i know with that guitar <laughs> this no, I, to happen on stage you know and uh it was never thought of that way but before this is over i think there has to be something live with that but th that's where the family part comes and it is the people you know that are involved that come to this there's no you know, no one's ever went, well, what am I going to get money wise? What am I, you know, you know, things like that, because I think people that I'm bringing on know at this point that the music business is, is not a lucrative one. And, you know, <laughs> no, it's not about that. It is about the, the art of doing it, which I think it, it's pushed further and further down a lot of people's yeah. mindset nowadays. But, you know, I think we all have a great time, uh, I think like, oh, you know, I think every female singer that's been involved in this so far have has reached out to Whitney and, you mm -hmm. know, welcome to the family, you know, even the guys, Ashton wrote, you know, yeah. stuff to it and uh, you know, things sweet. like that. So it becomes like, you know, this family team thing. And I think that's, I don't know if that happens a lot nowadays, but I'm glad it's happening with that. And it does make me want to continue doing this and, uh, I mean, there's really the family concept, you know, when people reach out to you and say, welcome to the family kind of thing, you know? And I think whether you intended it or not, Michael, like that's just who you are. Like you are somebody who cares about people and whether you directly wanted that or not, that's what you're getting. Cause that's just your, that's your soul. So. I appreciate that. And, and when I say family, it's not just the, the people that have been on the records. It is people like you, uh, Anna and, uh, Nick Court and Ryan Martin and Judy Lyon and and the people that jumped on board at the beginning that yeah. encouraged me to do this and it's like hey mm -hmm. you know and Shauna and going this is something special mm -hmm. this is yeah, big, big shout out to Shauna so uh, I mean I always include those people as part of and that and that's a, a a group of probably ten or twelve and, and when I I don't want to say fans they've turned Facebook friends people I've never met in person but that are always you know, just there going, this is, this is great. This is, I love this and do more, you know? So I include, it's, it's, there's a lot of people that I look at as being part of what we do here. And uh, I, I guess that's probably the beauty in it. Now I heard that there's a longer <laughs> version of, <laughs> I, I heard there's a longer version of Orion that's going to be in the album as well. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think it was uh, the video director of that was like, you know, to do a, a seven and a half minute song for a video to keep people's attention uh, is difficult and with pretty much no budget, you know, <laughs> things like that. So I, I, I think most Beauty and Chaos songs are long, but yeah, we, we what people are hearing right now is the single version of it. And it certainly isn't an AM radio length, you know, it's not... <laughs> Um, but really, the longer version, uh, we kind of have a little more fun on the outro. Whitney gets to kind of go off on mm -hmm. you know, using her vocal range. And it, it, I guess it almost has a, a weird cashmere vibe to it yeah. at the end. Uh, it, oh, I like that. And then, is it, you, and then you're going to have your own guitar solo too, right? <laughs> there's a little bit of guitar stuff at the yeah. end. Uh, you know, to me... The, the, the sol solo parts of, you know, like here's here's the guitar forefront. I mean, I love the the solo part that's in Orion. I think that kind of sound, that almost guitar, synthy Mellotron that I think we've used, it's mm -hmm. similar in uh, 
the EV track. I will follow you. It, it kind of mm -hmm. similar that's in look up. It's it's kind of what's in uh, stranger. It's uh, just kind of a combination of effects pedals that we use that I think is somewhat coming to this weird signature sound. But again, it's not, you know, there are guitar solos that have more notes on one song than I play on an entire record, uh, but. Also, I think like what you tend to do also is like, you've kind of redefined like what a guitar solo can mean. Cause you're like weaving it into the music versus it being just like, look at this one section. Instead, it's like part of the overall composition, which to me, adds to the atmosphericness of beauty and chaos and it gives it this whole other level of sophistication yeah that's true i'm so i'm a sophisticated rock star yes <laughs> <laughs> that's why we love you <laughs> yeah and then will you be releasing another single after orion from the album before before yeah. the actual release of the of the full length album yeah i think so i you know Probably uh, Shauna and probably anybody uh, that, you know, the formula probably is to wait longer. I don't know if I will, uh, you know, we, we film, it's it's odd. We, we shot Orion and then I think uh, Orion, and then we shot the next video the next day, the footage of it. Uh, so it was kind <laughs> that was of- That was a busy week for you. <laughs> yeah, and then Fish and I went on a vacation to go see our kids. So yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, bam, yeah. bam, But uh, I mean, doing the Orion video, we had a blast uh, doing yeah. it. We cut up while doing it. And, you know, I think there has to be this element of fun, but yeah, the plan, uh, I guess unless I'm talked out of it, which I usually don't get talked out of it, uh, we'll probably be coming out with this next video early December. You know, I, I don't think I think if we push it further, it gets lost in the Christmas thing. But I, I mean, I'm really proud of what we did here, and I want to make sure that this has its time to grow its legs and everything. And of course, when we do a next video, which it, it's actually. Uh, I don't know if your listeners would know, but it's a, a fantastic singer. She's Italian in a band, Kyrian. I Kim. know who she you know, is. <laughs> you had Elena on your show. I mean, I, I love her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think I was introduced to her. Uh, maybe wow. Shauna did something with us, and I'm like, who's this girl? And it's like, oh, she, you know, she's really popular in in uh, Europe. I don't know if she would do it. And it's like, I had, I just reached out and we hit it off and she filmed her parts in Italy. So, uh, oh. you know, it kind of putting putting together what she did and that and building a kind of a storyline. I think it'll be different than Orion, you know, as far as video concepts. And I love the idea that we do this kind of strange swing back and forth. And I don't think any of the videos look like the its predecessor and uh when we sat down with you know the people that we use the the gab team on this video did whitney's last video and i thought it was so cinematic and and, and gorgeous uh i i wish i would have known i would have loved yeah, the videos, your video your video is so beautiful too with i would have loved to have them do the stranger video you know i wish i would have known whitney then but you know cat led up <laughs> to us meeting Whitney. So everything happens for a reason, but you know, seeing her, the, the, the track's incantation, right, Whitney? Yes. That yeah. Such a good, it looks like it should be on the big screen. Uh, and that's the team that we used on this video. Uh, and yeah. they were great. And I mean, we, we took this little concept that uh, they had of the chess piece and it was odd. Whitney and I both started seeing chess pieces everywhere after we talked about it. Uh, <laughs> we went to go, yeah. uh, Tish and I went to go visit Sophia in, in Chicago and we were at this like bed and breakfast and there were these chess pieces just in the room that we rented. And then Whitney was on a beach and <laughs> there was some seashells in a chess piece. And it was just yeah. like, it was like- <laughs> All it, these motifs appearing yeah. like a sign is so cool. But so so that's the plan, uh, you know, hopefully by by December. I mean, the, the track is 99 percent mixed and the video is shot. And I've seen the first yeah. minutes of editing and it's it, it's 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 cool. It's real. It's different, uh, you know, than this one. And uh, mm -hmm. so 
and it's going to be called Behind the Veil. And yep. it's going to be released via 33.3 Music Collective. Yes. Michael Rosan, right? Yes. So and, I could um, not do this without Michael. He's right, uh, right. He Larry awesome. Sauce with me and, and Michael. Um, so you guys, this is, um, this is it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I, I love it when you always, I remember you always said this in the first video we did that it's really important to support the, the artists by buying their music. And I, I just want to emphasize that, how important that is for sure, you know, um, <clears throat> because uh, buying their music, their product, uh, and even, even this video alone, you know, liking it and uh, liking it and sharing it and making a comment if you like the video content. So um, really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard to talk about like, hey, buy my record without sounding like a snake oil sales salesman. Uh, ah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is what it is. You know, people, uh, I, I've, I've listened, you know, and Whitney and Kat are both a, a bit younger than I, and they, they're from a little bit different generation that has a little bit more of that social media, you know, the algorithms and all this stuff. So one thing we've done different on, usually I've waited 60 days after a release to let it go on Spotify. You know, that's just me being older and eh, get <laughs> off my lawn, you know, go to a record store and buy a record. Uh, I know that's not what 90% of the uh, people, you know, with music today, it, it seems like it's uh, a commodity to them that they should, that they should just, Put up an antenna and get it for free. Uh, We're so, in a TikTok world. Yeah. Now. So <laughs> it, it's on Spotify. Not uh, even. Not. You know, to me, if you if you like it, buy it. it, it if you if you like it and you you don't want to buy it, you'd rather take the two dollars and uh, buy Starbucks tomorrow. At least go down the rabbit hole and listen to Whitney's her catalog, and then the next record with Elena. Jump back and see what she did. If you like Stranger, listen to what Cat's done with Holy Wars and and so on. With every artist, at least at least do that. You know. Or you know, if uh, if you want to listen for free, just send us two dollars to buy a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we'll split. We'll each t take a dollar, Whitney, and I'll make it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, you know, the good thing is that you you also have it in vinyl, which that's a collectible. People should be buying that. You know. I hope so. I, I love the idea of, you know, it's still that thing of going as a kid, going in a record store, pulling it out, which one, I only have enough money to buy one, which one am I going to buy this week? And, you know, and then scouring the lyrics, you know, reading yeah. everything. I, I think that was such a cool time in music and there are less mm -hmm. of those people out there, but uh, there are some, and I'm, I'm blessed at 33 and a third, you know, Tim Perry still yeah. likes the idea of vinyl, but that's like to him, he's always been, hey, let's do the, the fold out sleeve. Let's do the printed that, you know, all these things that are certainly more money per copy. But I think at the end, it's this gorgeous piece of art that you hold in your hand. And uh -huh. you know, yeah. I think you listen to records different. It's not that you know, most people won't go get up and lift the needle and move it to another song. Like, I don't like that song. Or, you know, I just want to hear the single. I'm going to jump to track three. I think it's a commitment. You sit down and you listen to the 18, yep. 22 minutes that are on that side. And I, I think it, it demands a little bit yeah. more attention and you hear things, uh, you know, vinyl sounds better. I mean, it I breathes. anybody yeah. to say it's got a dynamic range that's just different, but I think you hear things more every time you listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I love vinyl. I'm I mean, I, I, I love the pictures. <laughs> and I have all the vinyl of uh, Beauty and Chaos. I mean, that's something. I mean, is, they're so beautiful. I mean, it's just the lyrics are there, the the, the colors and it, everything. It's, it's fun to do. It's fun to you know. It's a creative thing of going picking a cover and and picking mm -hmm. a name that means something. And and even even the track order to me is a is a thought process like what what flows into this and it, on digital and even CD you don't have that you don't you hit skip and it's like you know I if if if, if I'm someplace and someone's playing a CD of a record I knew and they put it in a song jumps to something else I get all out of sorts like you know 
Mm-hmm. If you start us, it's supposed to go into suffragette city. It's not vice versa. You know, it, <laughs> it's supposed to roll that way. And, uh, you know, that I think is the beauty of vinyl. So with me, I know you have a website and you also have your own music, yes. your own independent stuff. Uh, you have anything coming up for that one? Anything um, that works? I'm actually working on my third album right now, my third mm-hmm. studio album. Um, but I'm also doing uh, another collab with um, this dance producer that I just released something with. Uh, his name's Harry Vado. Um, so I am working on something with him, which is really fun. I'm really excited about that track. Um, but yeah, everything is kind of right now. I'm kind of deep in album mode. So I'm like writing, recording, producing with uh, my friend Tom. So we're doing mm-hmm. this record together and it's been it's been really nice. I'm exploring like a whole other side of my musicality that I feel like is just it's that moment of maturity when you realize you're ready to make that particular album that you've been wanting to make for a long time so I'm excited yeah. about it so that, that's whitneytiemusic.com that's correct website and then yeah. for beauty and chaos music.com I um Orion is also going to be available on, on right now it's available on Bandcamp right um, yeah, it's also available on our website. The one thing that's cool about that is that we put an instrumental version of it also. So if you want to do like karaoke Orion, <laughs> oh, really? no, oh, I'm like I'm that in, one. in the mirror, you know, you have that opportunity. <laughs> I should make creepy like Whitney heads that people have to put on when they sing. <laughs> <laughs> it's can, Halloween soon, so. Or the, or the, you could do it in the horse head. Yes, the horse head. <laughs> so, so Michael, do you do you uh, karao- do you do karaoke? Do they have karaoke bars and people just because you know they have a they need to make a rock and roll karaoke. They have yeah. one. There's one in uh, Portland that's really popular. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I used to go there. It's it's really it's, it's something inferno. It's like a some weird. It's just some weird large karaoke bar, but it's backed by like, like a real band, which is kind of cool. Because I'm always looking for someone who has like the doors kind of, you know, the music or the lyrics of the doors or something like that. You know, not 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 the Rolling Stones, the popular things, more of like the the, you know, like the doors, the, you know, um, the end or other, you know, those kind of songs under. You know, Go off on and you, you conjure up some gym and just oh I, I love it yeah because I could probably I could reach that range <laughs> at, at some point I, I will do a I I've been asked before will I sing a track uh, uh, at some point I will uh, you know I got kind of a bizarre punk rocky uh, thing uh, but we'll see I there's there's too many uh, great singers that I, I still want to work with before I subject uh maybe that'll be the last track. <laughs> but no. really I hope everybody gives this one a, a chance. Uh I, I you know I, I couldn't be happier with the song and the video. It just mm-hmm. it just fits. Uh I get people say it's 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 a stretch. I I I, I don't know. It's it's maybe it's just you know the the shift where beauty and chaos where our 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 head space is right now and i know this is just perfect you know i couldn't imagine you know something else coming out of that music than what whitney did and it's uh you know i i hope i hope people give it a chance you know i know we're people are bombarded with hundreds of songs you know we've gotten added to like some Spotify playlist and here's the hundred new songs out this week and, or this day. And it's just like, you know, technology is a good and a bad thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it bombards us with too much music in a way uh, that, you know, it, it just, it, you get inundated. I don't think you listen to stuff as much when it's just so much, but on the other side of it, it said this before the technology certainly allows there wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to do beauty and chaos without that technology of sending tracks to evie and uh you know england and sending tracks to wayne in brazil and and things like that you know so there's this good and bad out of it but hey i'm i'm happy and at the end of the day you know not being not sounding egotistical that's that's what if i'm happy in this in the the person i'm working with is happy with what we've created together, 
you know, the chips fall where they may and uh, you can't make someone, but hey, give it a listen. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 it's it's great. I we, I actually played it for the first time on last Saturday, and uh, and it's gonna be played again. And then this show will air, and we'll be playing some other Beauty and Chaos, some of my favorite from the previous albums. Um, yeah. So this this song Orion will be coming. It's the first single from the forthcoming album Behind the Veil, which is coming up in February of next year. So now that you said that, I actually have to get it out by February. <laughs> I don't want to make you a liar. <laughs> no, but it's something that to a, work towards. Uh, that, that's that's that that's certainly the goal. Uh, yeah. You know, I would have. Would you said this is five albums? If we get that out uh, in February, we've done five albums, and the Cure hasn't put out a record for the last ten years. <laughs> <laughs> we win on that part. <laughs> Well, you know, congratulations to you both, you know, and I'm looking forward to the album when it comes out and the next single. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, dear. I appreciate you not only supporting Beauty and Chaos, but you've done uh -huh. stuff on the artists that I've worked with. And that, that means a lot. You know, oh, I, I, I love all the artists that you uh, you have in your records and including with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. And uh, you're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. OK, now I'm just going to stop the recording here.